Hello everyone, my name is Fred, and in this video, I'll show you how to create a stylized water shader in Unreal Engine 5. After posting my short where I created similar water, I received many requests to explain how to make stylized water in Unreal. So today, I've decided to talk about the simplest way to create stylized water for beginners, so you understand the principles and logic of working with materials in Unreal Engine 5. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll get started. I have a small diorama of a tropical oasis that I prepared specifically for a beautiful water demonstration. In this quarry, I inserted a basic plane from Unreal Engine 5, on which we'll later apply the future water material. Let's start creating the water material. For this, I right-click and create a basic material. I also want to name it right away, so I simply type, stylized water. With a double click, I go to the graph settings. We have a basic node, and we need to configure it. On the right side in the settings, I leave the first two parameters as default. I'm interested in the shading model parameter, where I choose single layer water. Ignore the red error, it's caused by missing functions. First, I add single layer water material, which is essential for creating the water effect. With this function, we can create waves and internal liquid lighting. Therefore, it is fundamental in creating a water shader. Now let's add basic variables. For this, I press the one key and left click. We need three such variables. The first for base color, the second for transparency, and the third for reflection. For the reflection parameter, I'll set the value to 1, and for all others, we leave it at 0. Now we need to create several vectors, and for this, I simply type, constant 3 vector, I double click on the vector and choose the red color. After setting the color, we move the vector to the reflection coefficient. This vector will serve as the base color for our water, so I'll immediately convert it to a parameter so you can change the water color in real time. I name this parameter simply, water color. Let's check how this parameter works. For this, I save our material, and now we need to create a material instance for our material. This is necessary so we can tweak material parameters in real time in Unreal Engine. For this, I simply right click on the material and choose to create an instance. Let's immediately change the description so we don't confuse materials later. And now I assign our material instance to the plane. Just drag and drop it. As you can see, the water is too dark right now. Let's adjust the color. For this, I open the material instance and check the color parameter to activate it. Now we can edit this parameter and see the result in real time. Currently, the reflection coefficient isn't working quite right because I'm using an impure color. To create a pure red color, I simply set 0 in the G and B parameters. Now everything works as it should. The absorption coefficient parameter works in such a way that it reflects the opposite color, and we get the opposite shade. In this case, turquoise. On the color palette, this looks clearer. The next thing I want to do in the material is adjust the water color depth. For this, I add a multiply parameter. I simply type, multiply, in the search, and now I connect the color parameter to channel A, and connect multiply to the absorption coefficient channel. To adjust the color depth, I create another vector by holding the one key and left clicking. Now I connect the vector to channel B and convert it to a parameter so we can adjust it in our material instance. Let's name this parameter, color depth, to make it easier to navigate the material. I change the parameter value to 1 in our color depth parameter, and everything is ready. Now I notice that the material preview is dark because we didn't create a pure red color in the color parameter. So I went back to set the value to 0 in the G and B channels. Now I add a divide parameter to our setup. It's necessary to work with more precise values. To make it all work, I connect the A channels of multiply and divide, then insert the setup into the absorption coefficient. All done. 
Now the depth parameter will work more smoothly. So, I'm saving the material and suggest we see how it looks. Now with this parameter, we can achieve smoother color depth to make the water darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. We can say we're getting a diffusing gradient that looks pretty cool. The base color for the water is ready, and now I want to add animated waves to our water. For this, I'll need a normal map. I'll just import a prepared normal map into our water folder. You can find this normal map on my Discord server, Stylized Craft. I'll just place these files in the tools section, so if you're a 3D artist developing your stylization skills, head over to our server. We have a lot of useful and cool content. After adding the normal map to the project, we move to the material settings, and I click the T key and left mouse button to create a slot with an empty map. But our imported maps were immediately linked, if this didn't happen for you, you can find them in the explorer on the left and add them manually. We need two identical normal maps, and let's connect the first map to the normal channel. As you can see, waves have appeared on our material, but right now, they are static and lack animation. To animate our normal map, I add a panning parameter. And connect this parameter to the UV channel on our normal map. Let's move on to setting this parameter, and as you can see, it has several speed settings. You can create movement animation along the X and Y axes. For the first normal map, I set smaller values for the X position so our water has a smooth wave speed. To make the effect more interesting, I want to blend these two normal maps. We create another panning parameter and also link it to the second normal map. This time we set the value along the y-axis. It's important that the movement speed is the same for both normal maps to achieve the desired effect. Now we need to blend the movements of these two maps to get an unusual wave effect. For this, I add a blend angle corrected normals parameter. Now we connect our maps to this parameter and drag the final result into the normal channel. As you can see, a very smooth water ripple has appeared on the material. Let's save the material and see how the waves look on our water. For now, the water is too transparent, and the waves aren't very visible, but they are there. And you can see them moving, but a lot depends on the lighting in the scene. We've confirmed that our material works, and now I want to create a separate parameter to enhance the water flow and make the waves more voluminous. Let's return to our material settings and add a constant vector 3. I just go to its settings and choose the blue color. It's very important to get a pure blue color, so check that your R and G values are 0. Now I add a linear interpolation, where I insert our blue mask and connect it to blend angle current normals. Add a constant key 1 with a mouse click and connect it to the alpha channel of our linear interpolation. Our setup for volumetric waves is ready, and now just connect the lerp node to the normal channel. Let's move on to setting the constant. We need to convert it to a parameter so we can control the volume parameter in our material. I also named this parameter water intensity. Now everything is ready, and the last thing I want to do is set the correct values in our intensity parameter. To keep the waves from being too big, I set the base value to 0.2. This will allow us to increase the wave intensity more. You can see how it works in the material preview, so I set the value to 0.2 and save the material. Let's see how it looks in the scene. First, let's activate the new parameter. The base value is very small, and now if you increase it, we get bigger and faster waves. With this parameter, you can create calm water for a pond or increase the value if you're creating a mountain stream. It's really cool, but as I said, our material currently heavily depends on the lighting sources in Unreal. For clarity, 
I just rotate the direction light so you understand what I'm talking about and see that our material really works. We'll definitely solve this problem a bit later, but for now, let's move on. Note that all static objects currently do not interact with our water. Conditionally, the sun's rays that hit the water don't refract and have no effects. This effect depends on the reflection parameter, so let's go back to our material to set everything up. We already have a constant, so I'll just convert it to a parameter and call it blur intensity. Now, let's just save the material and go back to the scene. I activate a new parameter in our material instance and set the value to 001. I do this because the blur is very sensitive, so we need to use minimal values. As you can see, now objects in the water refract, creating a cool effect as if the water interacts with each of them. Now let's go back to our material and add color scattering so our water has shades and isn't so clear. This will enhance its overall visual and highlight all the effects we've created before. For this, I just copy this node and paste it again. And now we connect it to the scattering coefficient channel. We just need to change the names in our parameters to avoid confusion in the material instance settings. I change the color parameter name to scattering color. And I name the intensity parameter scattering strength. I reduce the base strength value to 0.2, and you can see how a new shade appears in the color. Let's save our material, and I'll show you how it works. Right now, we have a red color for scattering, and it's mixing too much with the base watercolor. Let's reduce the scattering strength to 0.08 and change the color. Now it's working as it should, and we get beautiful shades in the water. You can set any color and strength to achieve your personal result for your tasks. Our material is almost ready, and now I want to add a water glow function. I think you've often seen in games how water glows inside, giving the effect of clear water. Let's go back to our material to make the adjustment. I again copy the already created function by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl versus now I connect the function to color scale. And we also need to change the names in all our parameters. For the color parameter, I change the name to glow color. And for the strength parameter, I change the name to glow intensity. Let's save the changes, and I'll explain how it works using our scene as an example. I open our material instance again and enable our added parameters. First, I want to change the glow color to a turquoise shade to create a tropical biome mood. And now, using the glow intensity parameter, I can adjust the water's glow strength. You see how it works, and the water's edges become bright. Now we can create more interesting water variations for different types of biomes. I made a quick glow adjustment, and now I want to add the final function to our material. As you can see, our water doesn't shine much, so it doesn't look quite right. For example, this water from my project has more shine, which adds more liquid effect. To control the shine on our water, I just add a constant using the one key and a mouse click. And now we connect it to the roughness channel. I set the value to 0.1 for the water's shine, and to manage the values, we need to convert the constant to a parameter. And also give it a name. I name this parameter shine strength and save our material. Let's see how it works. Our water became shinier and really looks like a liquid. Now the roughness additionally highlights the normal map, and the waves become more voluminous. I'll slightly reduce the shine intensity to achieve a balanced stylized look. With this parameter, you can adjust the shine strength and also add more variability to your water. Overall, our material is ready, and I congratulate you on that. In fact, 
This is one of the simplest functions for creating stylized water in Unreal Engine 5. If you really want me to show how to create complex functions for stylized water and record a detailed video tutorial for you, write about it in the comments to this video. And be sure to like it so I know if you're interested in this content. As soon as this video gets more than 200 likes, I'll immediately record an advanced video for you. That's all from me. Don't forget about our conditions, and I wish you creative success. This was Fred, see you soon.